about what you want us to talk about? Um, well, at some point we can talk about like the possibility of fair view dollars and like the tool library idea and like all of that stuff, all of the like transition towns type stuff. And um, yeah, like there is so much to that and it's really hard to get into it, but like Go get it. You drive. I'm, I'd love to talk about that stuff. <laughs> well, I really like how, you know, I was just sort of quietly thinking about who I could talk to about transition towns. Because for anybody who doesn't know what transition towns is all about, is, is coming together as a community to sort of be more resilient in the face of like climate change or social unrest or like any of those other things and the like local dollars thing is one of their strongest things that they ever started to do and so I got this this book I printed it out from online and I was like holding on to it in my grubby little hands thinking about who I could talk to about this. And then when you joined the planning commission, I was like, yes, that is a person who <laughs> will be open to this. Because I know a lot of people would be open to, you know, the idea, but you know, like it takes a certain amount of effort to put that kind of thing into place. And most people are just too busy. Yeah, and I think also like, you know, it, I think it needs to kind of be recast like linguistically so that people get it and it's not like, cause a transition town is like, what does that mean? Like I think what that there's that ways right? that we can change how we talk about it. But basically it's like, if we're all really close and we all rely on each other and we all support each other, Mm -hmm. we're going to be better. It's kind of looking in some ways, and this might make people freaked out, but it's like, it's community as family and it's like community self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that in a former farming community, yeah, like that actually probably rings true in people who come here because they want community and nature. Right? And, or they don't, or they don't want the city or like, again, you can recast it in positive or negative or whatever, but it's like, I think that a lot of people really do. We're all hungry for connection. Mm -hmm. We're all hungry for community. We all, and I, I just, I like Holly, I think that that is the really great idea. And I think what we should do is work together to think about how to break it down. So like, again, in ways to talk about it and and act on it mm -hmm. that people understand like people could understand community gardening mm -hmm. people could understand supporting your small local businesses with these yeah. with these fairview dollars which mm -hmm. is just such a brilliant idea well and the like, welcome back wednesday thing that they started to do that is like that's a step in the right direction right exactly exactly and it's like and and I think that there's there's really great ways where we can create v real and virtual spaces to promote this idea and start actually creating some community. Like we have a far way to go to create some community here. Oh yeah. Like, people don't feel connected to Fairview. And I think that we need to maybe really recast some of our community events in ways that everybody feels a little bit more included, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like I met this sweet guy actually who lives over in your neck of the woods. So he's east of 223rd. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, somewhere between you and, and Halsey. Really? Yeah. And you go off on this road it's where the Wu-Tang Clan sign is. Did you see that? I don't know where that is. Dude, it's hysterical. Uh, on, on 223rd, 
somebody has a has a political sign out that's professionally printed it others must have this that says presidents are temporary wu-tang is forever it's like <laughs> the wu-tang clan i'm like whatever oh my god okay so down here this guy you would probably love him you and your husband would probably love this guy he and his partner have been here for a long time and they've been looking for an intentional community in the portland area they have not been able to find it he runs this amazing organic landscaping business again like you guys are probably like heart friends like oh, you yeah. need to know that this guy lives around the corner who's this person i need to meet him i know i'll go and find i'll take you in my car and like drop you at his house because i know where he lives and he's got this groovy hippie place with all these outbuildings like anyway it's like it's like the mushroom something lawn care business but it's really interesting and he is moving what because a he could not find the intentional community that they were looking for mm -hmm. and b they have a four-year-old oh and he said they live in a neighborhood with no sidewalks oh, and they yeah. live off of 223rd with no sidewalks and he's like and you know but you know what he loved he and he remembered he went to one of those national night out events that he saw he, and it must have been in his bill and he mm -hmm. saw it mm -hmm. and they went he goes and he didn't know the name of it which is awesome but he was like do you remember that hot dog event that you guys had <laughs> right do you remember that and i'm like dude i think i do know what you mean i think you're talking about the national yes yes that's what i'm talking about yeah and he loved that like we need more of that stuff and we might want to rename it or recast it or like maybe fairview on the green is like fairview for families and it's there's tacos <laughs> yeah right yeah or there's like i don't know but like i think that there's other ways that we can just be more of a magnet for people mm -hmm. and just do it brutally and deliberately for years because i remember that that's what we had to do in gresham oh yeah like, they didn't have a lot of the teddy bear parade basically was years of significant city promotion of one event wow. it is now like this beloved tradition and they've started the lilac run like oh. this like we're talking about culture change and this stuff just takes years yeah right so like as a city we have to say like guys we're not just going to do this for one year because we got a grant <laughs> like yeah. we we really are going to do this and we're going to do this and and invest our yeah. efforts as a parks committee and community engagement committee and a city council and all this to, to really do this and be super inclusive and pull out the stops and you know i mean shit, i'll get my freaking wagon out and i'll go back around and invite everybody to national night out totally. with a flyer right yeah. We, could do that. yeah we could all like literally personally put invitations for event i mean we're that small we yeah. could actually do that right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i love that yeah like i remember on the parks committee last year was our first annual family fishing event and that took us years like literally every year that i have been on the parks committee they were talking about this thing that they wanted to do and like it never happened until last year and it like they had been talking about that thing for probably decades before i even got on the parks committee and last year was the first time how did it actually, go dude it was a great event. We had tons of families, little kids come and learn how to fish and fish at the ponds, the, the Salish ponds. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we had all these volunteers and Oregon Department of uh, Fish and Wildlife was there and the Steelhead group was there. And yeah, it was great. And we can't do it this year. <laughs> Because for of COVID. For right? the obvious reason, right. And we're not having any meetings. And I'm like, we made so much progress. We need to do this next year. And if we're not having any meetings, when right. are we going to get to do this? Right? Like, 
I don't Girl, know. I think I want to be the liaison to your committee because I just, I, it's, it's one of the things that I just feel so strongly about and it was on my platform and I'd love to work with you, right? Yes. Um, I'm not the chair of that one, but. <laughs> that's okay. You're involved and, you know, who is the chair of that one? Well, currently it's Steve Marker. Oh, so he might want to be the, he might want to be the liaison. He might want to be, right. He's been on the parks committee for fun many years and the fishing event is his thing is like, it yes it is his thing like steve Marker, is he a good dude what's he all about oh he's he's great he's a great guy he drove that fishing event he's like he cares deeply about the children of fairview and oh, getting them that. out to the parks oh yeah we're we are going to be friends yeah yeah that's I mean, what i'm all about too yeah, everybody's got their quirks, but um, yeah, <laughs> quirky, get it. quirky, fun person. Yeah, I just everybody on the committee is just so so awesome. Like we've had a little turnover, but I have enjoyed being on the parks committee with all of those people. Honey, I think the parks committee really is where it's at because, like, that is Fairview. Like, that's what people care about. That's what people want. That's what people need. They want to protect them. They want to improve them. They want to connect them, right? We have so many parks. We have way more parkland per capita than, like, anybody around. That's what I know. I did, I did the Allen Berry three-hour tour, and I got, like... 30 acres of open space per 1,000 residents, which yeah. he calls the Cadillac number. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's really amazing. And like, it makes a difference. It's why I ran. I'm like, we can't fuck this up. Yeah, no. And like some people want to, you know, like there, there are like little pocket parks and people are like, well, why don't you just take that space and use it for something else. And we're like, no, <laughs> no, no, that's our value. That's like, that's our, that's the gem. It's what makes us unique. It's why people want to live here. If you take away the frogs and you take away the hummingbirds, if you take yeah. away like all that stuff, like that's not, then, then what we're, you know, this is going to sound bad, but like, we're like the, the folks next door, like, you know, right? Like it is like, we all have a value proposition and that's ours. So like, let's keep the space open. And that's one of my, you know, my thoughts about the planning commission. It's like my, my big thing that I want to do Holly is to reopen the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. and like put this stuff on paper, like thou shalt keep this. Right. 30 to 1000 ratio thou shalt keep right and and also do this really great stuff that you're talking about which is like and and what i love about you is the creativity like let's think differently like it doesn't have to be this way like if we could just if we could open the comprehensive plan and create a vision and let's say it's nature we love that then all of a sudden the bike path and the park, right? And the green wall and the, the garden library and the zero escaping and the, the, like, then all of that makes sense. And there's a, there's an organizing principle for what we're doing, which even, is like- Even micro shops. Right. You know? Like, per, like protect nature and yeah. build community like are we protecting nature are we building community are we protecting nature are we building community there's so many different ways that we can interpret that with policies and programs right mm -hmm. yeah we just got a lot of work to do <laughs> dude we have so much but but don't we like existentially here in america we have a lot of work to do yeah yeah everywhere and you know like not everywhere has thousand acres of <laughs> yeah no, no yeah a thousand acres, acres of open space for every 30 residents and again alan Berry's like it's in his lovely british accent it's cadillac number that's a cadillac number <laughs> 
That's actually one of my blog posts. Girlfriend, I'm going to turn you on to my website. You're going to be like, what? Yeah, I love it. I know. You're like, yeah. But I, it was, it, this has just been so eye-opening to, yeah, to see things and have like an excuse to get out there and explore what's right has always been like right here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I love your neighborhood, by the way. Oh, I love my neighborhood. I love my neighbors, most of them. Yeah, like, I have a lot of really good ones. <laughs> you really do. And you, I have to say, you have one of the grooviest houses on the street. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and it's really historic. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think you are, I know you don't want to be, but I think you are somehow part of the old town because your house is old, right? It, the front part is very old, yes, but um, the back part is new, newish. Right, of course, of course. It's older than me, but um, yeah, like when we first moved here, it was, we moved here in, in the end of May in 2015. And let's see. It was only a couple months later. We had our dining table in the front room because it was like that's the formal dining room in the historic part of the house. Let's let's hang out in the front part of the house and like be part of the neighborhood, right? So we're hanging out in the front part of the house having dinner one day when this huge crashing sound like a huge part of the front tree fell down right in our driveway and like smashed a trash can and hit the the door of the carriage house and like blocked half of the driveway right and uh, the trunk like the the branch that fell down was this big right and um so chris went out there with his tiny plug-in chainsaw and he was trying to break this thing down after dinner and the next day two guys showed up with chainsaws and like yeah like the guy over there and the guy two driveways down over there they both showed up they brought like extra people and i gave them glasses of water and like the people from across the street they just stop by to check out what was going on and you know be in solidarity with us and it was like oh my god how cool there is i've never lived anywhere where that would happen you know oh, like, i love that I in love minnesota that. that probably would not have happened where i lived in pennsylvania not only would that not have happened but they would have called the city to come and fine us because of our tree branch down. Like they wouldn't come and help us. They would come and fine us, you know, in California where we lived in the middle of nowhere, the neighbors would have helped, but it would have been like, okay, if the neighbors don't help, we are going to die because we can't live. We can't leave because we're so far in the middle of nowhere. But like here in this city, um, to have, two neighbors show up with chainsaws ready to help and not report us to the city <laughs> and spend like basically all day bucking these logs <laughs> and carrying branches it was just like it was so nice it was so nice like finally we are here in a place where people care about each other you know and that's so nice. Girl. I just, I just love them. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah, I'm just like, you know, since then we've had a little bit, a very small amount of turnover with the neighbors, and um, we're still trying to work out who's gonna land in that corner finally, because we're surrounded by a lot. Like we have a big, a big lot, so we have a lot of neighbors, and uh, I'm hopeful that the one side of the yard is going to be stable now because there are a couple of new people over there and hopefully they'll be there for a long time because i plan on being here a long time like 
Sorry, guys, in the back. I'm going to be here a long time. Good, good. <laughs> Honey, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Like, you I'm know, we, we got here and the yard was just like, like a golf course. There were no trees. We planted 50 trees here. <laughs> Did you really? Well, we've, we've planted a lot. I have a very comprehensive plan for my yard. <laughs> we've planted tons of trees and bushes and all of them are fruiting. So we have, uh, wow. it, it, it is quite a change from before we were here, but yeah, one of the things I wanted to do was to teach neighborhood kids about the fruiting trees and like maybe have classes and <laughs> here's how I think that girl let's do that like I think yeah. that we could really come up with a really interesting concept for the community center yeah and I think that we could really create that as a place because it is it's really centrally located within the city mm -hmm. right like we could think about that and create a new magnet that isn't city hall, that isn't the library, mm -hmm. that isn't the post office, but is a real community center mm -hmm. and pull people into that neighborhood. And, you know, and I think it's around nature and like tool guard, like tool library. Mm -hmm backyard like habitat program office yeah some kind of groovy kids in nature after school program some amazing teen and young adult organization that's about recycling or gardening or I mean, like anything that's green, like I just think what we should do is brand our city as green. Like we are about nature. Yeah. And I actually think like, again, like we could, we have these assets and we have these populations of people that really need these assets that have them. And then we have these populations of people with these that don't have access to these assets. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm starting to think the more I think about Fairview that somehow transportation needs to be made. So like, do we get a bunch of electric buses that will take kids from Fairview Woods and Oaks to Blue Lake Park or to the Oxbow? Huh. Maybe. Metro has a lot of money about equity. Like, do we take kids that are at Fairview Elementary in historic Old Town down to the old city hall to do some really interesting nature education after school? Yeah. Maybe. Like, you know, there's a lot of litter. Like, do we have a kids' core that's about, like, like, do we create, like, more community gardens? Do we create, like, like, I like this, like everything we can do to help kids and promote a healthy environment mm -hmm. and bring people together. Mm -hmm. Like people are desperate for togetherness in Fairview. Mm -hmm. Like I, this really lovely social worker named Claudia who lives in Old Town, like called me up. It was the nicest thing. I got this voicemail oh my God. And she didn't know I was running unopposed either. I hope you have so much support because your ideas are really awesome. And I just moved here a few years ago. I'm a retired social worker from Portland. I moved here a few years ago. I've got a couple plots at the community garden. I'd love to see more community gardens. And I would just really love to see anything that would really connect me with my neighbors because there's nothing cultural really here to do. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right? I love her. Yeah. I do too. And I'm like, why don't we do some things that will connect people to neighbors, connect people to their small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Connect people to the earth, their people, their small businesses, like all this transition town stuff. If mm -hmm. you, if you uh, translate that into 
other language is all those things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what that is. Totally. Yeah. It's like we help each other. Yeah. Like we get together and we clean up the dead plants in the middle of Fairview Parkway and plant new plants. Like right. We might have to block off a lane of traffic so that we're safe while we're doing it. Because if we want kids to be doing it, you know, I put some cones. But, right. um, <clears throat> you know, like we could, we don't need urban renewal money to take care of the plants in the middle of Fairview Parkway. And that was right. on the, we could have done that. We could have put that in urban renewal. And we decided not to. And my reason for deciding not to do that was because I think that we could just do it ourselves. You know, right. well, we could just get together with neighbors and do it ourselves and not pay our overworked public, public, you know, staff to do it. I agree. And like, and what does that look like? And how do we create that in a way that is super sustainable, that we're loving those people and supporting those people. Mm -hmm. And that no matter who comes or goes or who moves, like, you know, I think we're also starting to realize in COVID, like how fragile everything is. And like, oh my God, if Holly went, then holy shit, the whole whatever would go. Mm. And it shouldn't be so reliant on just a few people right. and a few volunteers to do things. Like, it, that is about sustainability, right? Yeah. Like, how do we make something that will be real? And like, you're going to do the stuff that we're, we expect you to do. You're going to love it. We're going to love you and support you and grow you in a way that like it will keep going right. and nobody will nobody will feel neglected nobody will feel put upon things won't just dissolve into nothingness mm -hmm. right and that actually that takes a lot of time and actually that takes a lot of um i think paid work to engage people like communities don't just organize themselves generally generally like, they do. I mean, like, that's what's interesting. So one of the things that I did in this whole thing, the only, the only social event that I had under COVID for my election was a, a weird, wonderful, spontaneous, on the dock experience on Fairview Lake that my old editor from the Oregonian had some dragon boat friends who live on Fairview Lake. And it turns out they're all like officers in like the Fairview Lake Properties Owners Association. But you know, they, you know, they actually, but again, they're organized. Yeah. And they have an interest, right? They have an interest in making sure that the, that the lake isn't choked with weeds or algae so people can actually enjoy it. Mm -hmm. so it's basically like a chemical imbalance organization. <laughs> like, it sounds awful, but it's actually really true. They just make sure that like, the way that they're maintained, that the lake is maintained either through dredging or algae and weed, uh, what am I, control. Yeah. Right? And they're lovely people, but like that's an organizing principle. And we don't have an organizing principle for Fairview. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you could come over here and help this these folks out on this thing. And you could go over here and help those folks out on this thing. And then a couple times a year, we can come together and have like free hamburgers or hot dogs or watch movies or what, or have an awesome family event, right? Like, I just, I think a lot of it actually, it's weird. It's like, it's such a thing around both policy, like really hardcore policy stuff that we're talking about, like around economic development and like open space preservation and communication and community engagement. Because mm -hmm. you can't have one without the other. Right. right? Yeah. Oh man. 
Oh, so much. I know. Look at you. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. You're like, I'm done. Like, like this is done. That's done. Nice. Yep. It's all gone. I'll be making tacos or some sort of equivalent later on. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was so nice to see you, girl. We're going to do some great things. <laughs> I know. Like, all of the things that you've mentioned are, like, super big and require a lot of thought and way more thought than I have right now available to me after all of this. <laughs> I get it. But, um... I'm so glad to see you. It's been forever. <laughs> I know, it really has. And I'm sorry that I missed you when you were canvassing my neighborhood because my husband was working on like something for school because he's getting a master's degree right now. He is? What is he getting a master's degree in? Well, he's, he's going to Georgia Tech online for computer science. And so, right, he works in IT. And so he was in his office on the day that you came to our house and he, he was like, some blonde lady just walked up our driveway. <laughs> and I'm like, who is this person? <laughs> we have to find out. No, right? Do you know how many freaking people I've scared the shit out of? A lot. Yeah. A lot. I bet. <laughs> yeah. They're like, who is this woman? She's coming to the door. <laughs> and then it wasn't until the next day I found your flyers and I'm like, oh, Whoa. So she was come to my neighborhood. That was it, girl. I mean, no, again, I mean, like, I get it. I, do you know how many people have totally freaked out that they're like they're in their garage or whatever and they're like, <gasps> and I'm like, I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> It feels impolite, honestly. Well, I, like, understand everybody's concern about public safety and, like, crime right now because there have been a bunch of break-ins, you know. Oh, there have been. Yeah, there, there have been a bunch of break-ins and, like, other, like, stalkery-type things going on. Really? Yeah, like, like, you know, people just walking onto other people's property and just, like, wandering through or peering over fences and that kind of thing so yeah. like yeah when i when he said that somebody was in our driveway <laughs> like somebody's in our driveway <laughs> oh my god you must have been like what the mm. well right. and the day like two days later somebody came and like turned around and their truck was full of stuff and we're like is that the same truck that was full of stuff that somebody else thought was going to break into their house? And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. Honey. I'm so glad it was you. <laughs> it was just me just dropping off my stuff. I love your street. It's absolutely, it's so, it, like, our, our city is so various. Yeah. It is so various. It's like, it's a bunch of goddamn independent people like living how they want to live to a mm -hmm. large degree. Yep. Yep. And, and how do you meet them and like find common ground with them? And like, this is something that I'm working on with right. like neighbors beyond who I know, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and like, it's nice to see somebody canvassing and, and going door to door and meeting everybody. And I want to talk to that woman from Fairview Oaks and Woods who you talked to. For Rashida, an hour. Rashida, okay. you would freaking love her. I encourage her. She's like, maybe I'll work for the city council. I'm like, I actually like, she has five kids. I'm like, I actually think based on your experience, you should really run for the school board. Yeah. And I encourage her, I'm like, email me. I can connect you with East County rising or this or that, or emerge Oregon or all this stuff. And I haven't heard from her oh. and that's okay. But like, yeah, you never for know. Sure. Like, I just think it's important to do it and you never really know. If it matters, like I, there have been a lot of times where I'm like, why are you doing 
all of this? Why are you spending all of these hours dropping things off to people and you, you because you really can. hear anything, right? And then there's a few times that I have and that stuff is super yeah. transformative. It's like yeah. when somebody actually calls you and was like, I saw your flyer. I love oh. your ideas. Oh, like, yeah. you know, and you're like, oh, like, or, um, <clears throat> there's a guy actually in, 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 in Old Town who has lived there for 45 years. And he said, nobody has ever dropped anything off at my door. What? Wow. And like, you kind of realize, Holly, like, the bar has been really low for a really long time and nobody has tried really oh. to connect with people and to love people and to, to like help all people. Yeah. And he has been trying to get this little road paved by his house that is not paved. Like we have roads that are unpaved. What? Yeah. No. Oh we have God. streets without sidewalks. We have neighborhoods with no street lights. We like, there is real inequity here. And he told me what city councilors have told him. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really unkind. And it's like, wow, like somebody would tell another person, like in so many words that you don't matter. Oh. And, uh, we got to fix that, you know, and we have to be really careful what we promise because if we don't deliver what that means and what, what, what that creates emotionally for people and how it makes them feel about government, which I love mm -hmm. and right. Like, you know, and, and the public square and civic life, that's really sacred stuff. And if you don't, deliver that's a real that's a real problem right so i i just think that there's so much we can do but it's um it's gonna take a long time it's gonna take a long time to do it and it's gonna take a long time for people to believe that people are gonna do it right right yes. i think for a long long time people have seen that people haven't necessarily been following through yeah well, I love you and I'm really thankful. I love you too, honey. I'm really thankful. We're going to do some good stuff. I, yes, we are. And thank you for doing all the things that you're doing. And if you hear from Rashida, Rashida, I want to talk to you. I'm your neighbor. Like, please, seriously. I'm serious. I'll go find her. I actually, I mean, I physically actually know where she lives. So she doesn't email me and she hasn't emailed me, but if she does, if she doesn't, I actually could find her apartment. What? And knock on her door. Yeah. Rashida, we're talking about you. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my goodness. Zoom just crapped out on Lord, me. Girlfriend, it'd be fun to see you. Zoom just crapped out on me. <laughs> <laughs> My internet connection is un unstable. <laughs> okay. All right. Honey, I love you. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Wendy. Bye. Bye-bye, babe.